a rather huge Tesla headlight from a Tesla Model X, courtesy of Gordon at eFix. Uh, he was a bit disappointed that this £1,200 module uh, didn't quite last the life of the car. And uh, when it failed, uh, there was a knock-on effect. I don't know if it was connected, but the uh, the number plate light defaulted to on. It made me wonder if there's a network problem with this. So I have done some initial exploration. Apparently there is a external uh, mechanical drive for actually tilting the light inside. What happens if I just shove my finger in there now? Is it going to do anything? Oh, it does. You can actually see it just pushing uh, the LED module up. Interesting. Uh, and on the back, I've already taken some screws out for brackets, and we've got this, which is the electronic module. One of the things that's always suspect with these, I have disconnected the two connectors. You get uh, this is a part that's going out to LEDs. This one looks as though it's going over to uh, this connector here. So this is going to be the power and the data. There's five pins in it. Uh, but one of the prime suspects in these is the electronic modules, because if you get a problem with the canvas network, it can actually take down other things in the vicinity. So we'll take this one uh, apart over on the normal workbench where you can see it closer. Now this is glued together and then clipped together. It's absolutely completely unserviceable. So I'm going to try and get it apart. Uh, but really, I'm going to be getting a big screwdriver into it and I'm going to be prizing in and it's not going to end well. It's going to break the plastic. I don't think there's any other way to get it out because uh, it is glued together. As these things are, and it's not like heatable glue, I think it's going to be a Dremel job to get this open because uh, it is well sealed. So I shall try and Dremel it apart right now. One moment, please. A handy hint so far, if you get the urge to take a Tesla headlight apart, uh, don't waste your time the Dremel. Use a cutting blade in an angle grinder, it's the probably the fastest way to do it. And also, make sure you do it outdoors and wear protective clothing and all that, because it doesn't just spray the dust everywhere, but molten plastic comes out like candy floss as well. Because this is very chewy, uh, I guess, polycarbonate, and it, it's got this urge to actually refuse itself together again. The Dremel was not happy by the time I decided it had had enough. So let's put this out of the way. We have the decorative trim here with its uh, LED modules. I see a section coming around the back here and I see a section here. Uh, we've got this, I guess, is this the main one? Uh, that'll be interesting. So I'm gonna take all these modules out uh, and we can take a look at them in more detail. They might be small enough to actually go to the main bench where we can get a closer look. So I shall do that now. That's the trim out with uh, its sections of LEDs around the outside. We shall explore those. Uh, white out. This is what happens when you're trying to film something black. And this is the uh, diffing mechanism in here. There's very little movement. I didn't realize the whole thing physically moves inside, but I suppose that makes sense. We appear to have a, a matrix of LEDs firing up the way into these scooped reflectors. It's quite a complex optical design. Okay, carry on with the teardown. I've got a pile of Tesla parts, including a little air stirrer fan in there. And its voltage rating is 13.5 volts, suggesting that it is just running off the auxiliary battery uh, that's used in Teslas, aside from the main automotive power battery. I have taken the screws out of this, but I have not lifted the lid yet because uh, I wanted to share the moment. The optics are fascinating because this particular one can, with external control, tilt sideways to actually spread the beam out and the other ones can actually tilt up and down to actually adjust their height on the road. But it's a very small movement. It's just very highly optimised optics. And the strange thing is that, say for instance this one, well, as in all the set of headlights, it's very, very tiny LEDs. Let me just zoom down in this because they're super tiny. Super tiny indeed. Uh, and they're just three volt LEDs. They're single chip LEDs with a little sort of uh, resistor and capacitor. Is that a resistor and capacitor in this one? Yes, I'd say it's a resistor and capacitor. But a little uh, snubber network basically across them. Each LED, well, each module effectively has a series of connections, but it's got two connections for the LEDs in this case, three pins, and one connection goes onto the metal work via uh, the screws going through the circuit board and actually clamp it on. So it must be for screening purposes, but that's gone a bit wrong in one of them. 
This is one of the decorative panels. This one is notable that these are three volt LEDs again, quite an unusual style. And they're on separate aluminium sections of a continuous PCB, but the ribbon that passes between them uh, actually jumps off the aluminium and ducks down. Uh, it's quite unusual. But this one has the same screening again, where it's got like one, two, three, four connections. Uh, two of them are common. One of them is going to uh, the other end of the LEDs. The other two connections are going to this end. And uh, then the, the fourth connection is going to this screening pad underneath the mounts of this, but it's tarnished and it's not making good connection to the screw. Not that that really affects these, the LEDs will still light. But in this case, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen 10, 11, 12, 13 LEDs, roughly three volts each. That's about 39 volts across this. So 13 across that section. What have we got in this section? This is the other decorative trim. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 times 3 is 45 volts roughly across this section. Interesting. So two of those sections in there will be voltage boost sections. On the main headlight section, which is just surprisingly lacking LEDs, given the amount of light that comes out of these things, it's got these pairs again in uh, series. So each pair takes about six volts with its own little filter network on each one, each for each pair of LEDs. And then uh, it's got uh, them over here. Now that, what is that? Is that just a link? It's a zero ohm link. Is it just jumping across? I'm not sure that's, that might just be jumping across or it might be. I doubt it's a fusible link. I think it's just actually a jumping link. Uh, and that is it. Right, tell you what, let's get into the uh, the control module now. Where's the screwdriver to pop the lid in this? This is where I find out it doesn't come out. It does come out, but it's a friction fit. That is surprisingly empty. What have we got here? I can see a tiny inductor here. Oh, I'm going to have to go in deeper. Am I going to be able to go in? Is that it? That may actually be it. Oh dear, there's a problem. There's why it failed in the first place. This is what Eric O calls the green crusties. Uh, let's try and tame this down just a little bit. Do you see this green here? It's corroded. Water has got into this. Um, and that makes sense because this was screwed in the back. So perhaps the seal has allowed water to penetrate and that has uh, then got in here and it's caused corrosion. That is what killed this light. Wow, the whole light dead because of that. But I'm looking at this now and thinking, how on earth are they controlling this? Because those super high power LEDs, I was expecting more. It's super optimized. Um, I'm seeing one inductor and thinking, well, is that not like, that's strange. Give me a moment. I'm going to explore this a bit further, but at the moment it's not got as much on it as I was expecting. Is something hiding from me in here? I'm not really sure. One moment, please. Oh, there they are on the back. Uh, glued in. You can't remove this without breaking the inductors because they're physically siliconed onto the, uh, onto the heat sink. They've got little housings that they squint and squish the silicon about them. Uh, two big ones here. Well, not any longer. And then the smaller ones. So how is this going to go? Uh, the smaller inductors. I guess the bigger ones may be doing the... Uh, let me let me work this out. The bigger ones may be doing the higher voltage, but I wouldn't really expect to be big because I, I thought those were mostly, mostly decorative lights. I don't think these are super duper high power. I thought it would be these ones... Uh, would be the ones that have the fairly decent, it would be buck regulators in their instance because they're stepping the voltage down from 12 volts. I'm not really sure. It's not exactly what you call an ideal circuit board to uh, to trace out, uh, given that it's got bazillions of tracks and it's it's wide, which doesn't help. So, um, yeah, power's coming on here. Those two are common. Those two may be common. Oh, give me a second. I'm going to work this out. 
Yeah, two for one pole of the power supply, positive or negative. Uh, two for the other one. And then I guess the other two are data then. Maybe canvas. So uh, positive, negative and canvas, which is very much what we get these days in modern vehicles. Interesting. Is it, is it canvas they're using too? This is a proprietary protocol. I wouldn't surprise if they're using something proprietary. But it would make sense to use uh, industry standard canvas for the availability of the components. But there we go. Interesting stuff. I feel I need to probe about other bits here. Yeah, that's the, that's the negative there. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, that was uh, actually quite worth taking apart just to see the construction, but so annoying that uh, what has destroyed £1,200 worth of vehicle uh, component is uh, just a little bit of water ingress. And having said that, this module just unscrewed from the back of that light and there were two connectors. Couldn't they have just changed this module? Maybe it's just a, a standard fix is to change the whole light. But there we go. Interesting stuff. So thanks to eFix for sending that. It was very frustrating to take apart, but that's okay. Uh, and uh, I'll put a link to their website, well, their YouTube channel, uh, down below in the description. But very interesting. That's what's inside a Tesla uh, Model X headlight.